Welcome to worship on this All Saints Sunday. Um, a couple of notes before we get started. We're going to be doing our remembrance of the saints a little bit differently this year than LCOS has done it in years past. Um, I'll explain a little more when we get to that part in the service. Um, today, no, not today, tomorrow is the uh, Richmond Pops concert. So if you would like tickets, if you're interested in that, talk to Ed, um, talk to Margaret, and they can see if there are tickets that they can hook you up with. Um, still are needing items for Thanksgiving baskets. Next Sunday at 5 o'clock, there's going to be a joint middle school, high school um, youth event with Christ the King Lutheran Church and St. Luke's Lutheran Church. Um, so if you are in that age range or have folks in that age range, talk to me if you need more information. Uh, I know that we have a couple other announcements. There's more stuff in the sheet. I want to say uh, thank you to the 13 folks. I mean, I was one of them, but thank you to the 13 folks who went to the um, party with a purpose for Richmond Friends of the Homeless last night. It was a great event, and thank you to this congregation in general um, for the work and support that it has for Richmond Friends of the Homeless. It was a great event. And I know that Gail and Jules, right? Do you have an announcement? Oh, oh. Bats. 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 Sorry, Bats and Jules have an announcement. <laughs> You're right there in front of me. She was hiding behind me. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Babs, and this is my friend Jules with his mimosa. <laughs> so we are here today to encourage all the fine women of our congregation and their friends to come to the annual... Um, Christmas brunch and ornament exchange on December 3rd. We are going to have a fantastic time. Jules here has planned a lovely brunch for us with some mimosa, <laughs> a couple of different kinds of quiche, some fruit, some coffee cakes, some coffee, and mimosa. <laughs> we encourage you to purchase a um, Christmas ornament, so be looking in the stores for one. The limit is $15. The event is free, but we want you to bring a wrapped Christmas ornament to, to the event. Um, we want you to sign up so that Jules knows how many mimosas to make <laughs> and how much food to have with our mimosas. <laughs> might need somebody to carry him out. <laughs> um, but the sign-up sheet is back there. We hope you'll come and join us. It's going to be a great time, even if you don't drink. <laughs> um, Inga, our nursery attendant, will also be here during that event for kids under five. Um, so if you'd like to come but are concerned about child care on that morning, uh, we'll have the nursery staffed for kids under five. Uh, one last thing before I let you go. We are still looking for a new treasurer. David has done an excellent job. We want to give great thanks for the work that he's done. Um, but he deserves a break. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but we, we need someone to take on that role. And David is more than willing to help with that transition, make sure that the new person knows everything that they need to know and feels comfortable, um, but we need to get that new person in. So if you have gifts that you feel like God might be calling you to use in that way, um, talk to me, talk to Ryan Shannon, talk to anybody on council, really, um, and let us know what you're thinking. All right, did I miss any announcements today? No, so let's prepare our hearts for worship.
be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days. Amen. Dear friends, together let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion, in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant his grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You be seated. The first reading is from the seventh chapter of Daniel, in the first verse. In the first year of King Belshazzar of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head as he lay in bed. Then he wrote down the dream. I, Daniel, saw in my vision by night the four winds of heaven stirring up the great sea, and four great beasts came up out of the sea, different from one another. As for me, Daniel, my spirit was troubled within me, and the visions of my head terrified me. I approached one of the attendants to ask him the truth concerning all this. So he said that he would disclose to me the interpretation of the matter. As for these four great beasts, four kings shall arise out of the earth. But the holy ones of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever forever and ever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will speak the song responsibly. Hallelujah. Sing to the Lord a new song. God's praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in their neighbor. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their ruler. Let them praise their maker's name with dancing. Let them sing praise with tambourine and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in the people and adores the poor with victory. Let the faithful rejoice in triumph. Let them sing for joy on their beds. Let the praises of God be in their throat and the two edged sword in their hands. To wreak vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples. To bind their kings in chains. To inflict on them the judgment decree. This is glory for all God's faithful ones. Hallelujah. The second reading is from the first chapter of Ephesians, beginning at the 11th verse. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will. So that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the true word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him 
who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day, and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. You may be seated. Got any of our young folks who'd like to come up? <coughs> Hello. Hi there. We had a whole crew today. Those are twins. Those are twins. Thanks for letting me know. <laughs> Hello. Hi, bud. You gonna sit next to me, or do you want to sit next to your friends? Sit next to me. Okay. Have any of you ever heard the word saint before? Not even the football team. Yeah. <laughs> You have? Have you heard it before? The green team. Yeah, we did work for the green team. That was William and Mary, in case you're wondering. That was the team he was rooting for. So we use the word saint today. Today we call it All Saints Sunday. And today is the day when we remember people who have died, who aren't with us anymore. Are there any people that you know in your life who maybe aren't here anymore? Maybe grandparents or, yeah. Your grandma and grandpa? Your doggy? What? Your dog? Our great, great grandma. You're very old. So these are all people that we love, right, who aren't with us anymore. And we call them saints because they are people who we can look to, who made us maybe taught us something about love, maybe taught us something about God. And so we can look back and remember them. But do you want to know a secret? I mean, it's not really a secret, but do you want to know something cool? You're all saints, too. You know that? You are. You're all saints. And so is everybody in this room. You look so, you look a little you look a little non convinced. <laughs> we are all saints in this room just because God loves us and God made it so. So it's not because we're perfect or we do everything right. It's because God loves us and said, "I am going to make you holy. I am going to make you a saint." And so God does it just because God loves us so much. So if you're ever having a bad day. 
If you ever feel like you can't do anything right, or you're struggling, or you don't know what's happening, you can remember that you're already a saint just because of how much God loves you. And if you ever want to try to do more, love people more, care for people more, you can look at some of the people in this room, maybe some other people who believe in God and want to show you what faith is like. You can look at them and they'll set an example for you of how to live. It doesn't just need to be your parents. It can be any of the grown-ups in this room. Yeah, any of the grown-ups then. All right. <laughs> can we say a prayer together, guys? All right. Repeat after me, please. Dear God, Dear God, thank you for making us saints <laughs> and giving us saints to show us how to live. Amen. Thank you guys. You can head on back. Where are you going back with, bud? So, if I'm being honest, I don't always love the Beatitudes, those blessings that we hear in the Gospel, um, especially Luke's Beatitudes. I don't love them for All Saints Sunday. With the blessings and the woes, it seems to steer us in a direction that I don't know that I want to go pitting us against them, saint versus sinner, blessing versus woe, now against then. I don't think that's Jesus's purpose here. And Luke, Jesus is always talking about reversing the current order of things, reversing expectations, toppling power structures, flipping things on their head. Just look at the Magnificat, Mary's song of praise after she becomes pregnant with Jesus. She talks about God casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. And so I think these Beatitudes are another example of that. Whenever I read passages like this, these harsh words from Jesus, these woes sound like threats and ominous ones. Watch out, they say, or this could happen to you. But then, I wonder if they are more naming realities that have come to pass or more than likely will come to pass. And in the case of these woes, maybe it's naming two realities. One reality that states that when we live as a disciple of Jesus, our life will change. When we share what we have, we might individually have less, but the collective will have more. When we advocate for justice, we might lose the goodwill of people who profit off of others' oppression. When we can no longer ignore the suffering of others, our hearts will be open to feeling the communal pain. And then there's a second reality, a reality that states that nothing is permanent but God. Everything else can fade away, can be lost in a second, cannot be counted on, cannot be taken with us. Everything but God who loves us and has claimed us. So, yes, woe to you who are laughing now because there's no way that you could be laughing forever. Woe to you who are rich now because you cannot take it with you. And so the challenge begins in verse 27 to everyone who is listening, not just those who might have blessings or woes directed at them, to everyone. And that bar is set high. <laughs> when it starts at verse 27. It may be that we've heard these things so many times before that we don't feel their full impact anymore, but these are hard things. Praying for people who persecute us, that's not easy. Giving away additional clothing to people who've already stolen from us. Offering up ourselves in a nonviolent way when someone strikes us. Love our enemies. This is not easy. It's All Saints Sunday, the day that we remember those who have gone before us, who have passed along the faith to us, who have lived holy lives. And the tendency, when we think about the company of saints, is to think of them as paragons, as perfect, 
We have the fuzzy memory in our mind of people who were so faithful and so confirmed in their faith that they never faltered. But we all know that that's not the reality, <laughs> that no person is perfect. And I can think of quite a lot of people who have fell, fallen quite far from perfect and yet who are still counted among that host. Because we trust and we believe and we know that they are with God because God keeps God, God's promises. I want to share with you a story about my grandfather who I think <laughs> exemplifies this point that I'm trying to make. In 2014, a few months before I was ordained, um, my grandfather died. He was my mom's dad. My mom, if you remember, is a rostered deacon in the church at the time. She wasn't a deacon yet, so she was still a diaconal minister. Um, my dad was a Luther, or my grandpa was a Lutheran pastor, and he was a great carpenter. What he wasn't, however, was always easy to get along with. And as I talk about this, you probably have people in your own families, in your own lives, who meet some of this criteria. He had strong ideas about what was right and what wasn't right, which meant that there were a lot of topics that our family had silently decreed or forbidden to bring up with him. We didn't talk about education because it would eventually lead to a discussion about how terrible the education system had gotten. We didn't talk about politics because no one wanted to hear how the politicians he didn't like were ruining the country. We didn't talk about religion, if we could help it. My grandfather was not comfortable with women in leadership roles in the church, which meant that even my mother's role, then as a lay rostered leader, um, before we started using the language of ordination for deacons, even my mother's role was difficult for him to swallow. And the fact that I was planning to go to seminary um, was even more difficult to swallow. And he told me that Jesus called 12 disciples and not one of them was a woman. As you might imagine, this led to a pretty massive blow up with my family um, that ceased communication between him and my parents and my siblings and I for months at least six months. This was my grandpa. I loved him, but our relationship was marked and broken by all the things we couldn't talk about and the things that he decided to say. Now, my grandma died a couple years before he did. Less than a year, actually, after that big blow up, it was actually at Thanksgiving, that caused us to break that communication in our family. She was a quiet, sweet, faithful woman who had always been the one to smooth things over when conflict arose in our family. She was the one who made sure that we knew how much we were loved, even when our grandpa made us maybe doubt it. And when she died, my grandpa came to a realization. The day that she died, he started reading her journals. She had been keeping a journal since my mom was in her 20s. And in reading her words and her thoughts, he realized that he had been pushing everyone that he loved away because my grandmother would have to call and make amends to bring everyone back in. And he realized that if he wanted to have any relationship with his children or his grandchildren, he needed to make a change because my grandma wasn't there to do it for him anymore. And... To our great surprise, uh, he did. He, we went out for the funeral, and the week that we were there for the funeral, he told my mom that he was proud of her, something he had never said to my mom before in her adult life. When I graduated from seminary, I should say also, he sat me down um, that same week of the funeral and told me that the church was always going to be ready for things that he wasn't ready for. But that didn't mean that he didn't love me, and that if he was still around at my ordination, he wanted to be there. And so when I graduated from seminary, he gave me this cross, which my grandmother had given to him a couple years before he had retired. Some of the things that we could never bring up around him were now being talked about. Now, this isn't that he changed his mind overnight. 
about his long-held beliefs. It wasn't that he was just brainwashed or mind-wiped. Instead, he realized that his relationships were more important than showing everyone else how wrong they were. By the time he died, my family was thankful that we had had at least a few years of being in relationship with him in a way that was actually nice. It didn't erase all the difficult years, the hurt and the pain that we went through, but it was important for us to know that he loved us and supported us. So when we attended his funeral in 2014, the sermon preached at his funeral ignored all of that pain and difficulty that we had gone through. Have you ever been to one of those services where you listen to the people talk about the person and you're like, I don't know who they're talking about. <laughs> that, that was my grandfather's service. It painted my grandpa as a man that he wasn't, or at least as a man that he wasn't always to us. It lauded his ministry, his dedication to the church, which were both true, but it was a funeral sermon for a pastor without fault, not one for a man who I remember both denigrating my call as a pastor and acting out the story of the three little pigs to make my siblings and I laugh when we were young. To add to this, the person giving the sermon and leading the funeral never once referred to my grandpa by his name. He never talked about Emmett Schmidt, the father, the husband, the son, the grandfather. He only talked about Pastor Schmidt, the paragon of religious virtue. This is the problem that happens sometimes when we talk about saints. When we call someone a saint, we only want to look at their positive qualities. We only want to pay attention to the holy things that they did and ignore the rest. But a person's actions are not what defines them as a saint. Saint does not define someone by the life they lived, but by their status as a child of God. Pastor Schmidt was not a saint because he was ordained or because he preached the gospel or because he fed people with the body and blood of Christ. Emmett Schmidt is a saint because God claimed him in the waters of baptism and worked through him throughout his life. We know as Lutherans that being saint and sinner are not mutually exclusive. They go hand in hand. And so while Grandpa certainly had his share of sins, we still call him saint. And we still count him among that communion that praises God without ceasing, along with so many others who we have loved and who have died. All Saints is often an emotional service, or even a sad one, especially for anyone who has lost someone recently, for whom grief is still fresh. But I want to remind you that All Saints is also a day of celebration. A day to give thanks for those people who we've loved. A day to acknowledge their, the reality of their lives and the, their status as a child of God. A day to remind ourselves of all the ways that we are still connected with them. If you ever need a reminder, my favorite thing to do is to look at our communion liturgy. Every week during the great Thanksgiving, I say some version of, and so with all the choirs of angel, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. And then we sing, holy, holy, holy. In that moment, we are joined with that entire communion of saints who are already with God and who offer praise without ceasing. That moment breaks in and we're one. Saints in heaven, saints in this room, saints because God has made it so. Amen. <laughs> I heard that. <laughs>
united with your saints across time and place, we pray for our shared world. Holy One, your church rests on the faithful who came before us. Give bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders the will to carry the church forward and discern your will for the future. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our prayer. Holy One, the earth is yours and all that dwells within it. Care for places ravaged by natural disasters. Quell raging fires and halt destruction caused by flooding. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Holy One, you raise up leaders to guide your people. Kindle in them a passion to care for others, a desire to seek the common good, and the courage to love their enemies. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Holy One, you bless those who are poor, hungry, and reviled. Provide food, housing, and security to all who are vulnerable or in crisis. May those who have more than enough give generously. We, pray, we lift our voices to pray especially for brothers, Tony, the Blackwell family, Ken, Vinny and family, Anya, Rita, and Courtney, the Neighbors family, the Nails family, Elaine, Ella, Jan, Pat, the Roth family, Bertie, Joe, Steve, Beth, and Marsh. And for all those whom we keep on our minds and in our hearts. Brian and Tony, Brian Ellison. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Holy One, hold us in community with one another. Nurture a spirit of abundant hospitality and intentional inclusion among us welcoming the gifts of adults and children. Inspire creative visions for our life together. Lord, in your mercy. Holy One, we remember in thanksgiving all those who have died. Wipe away our tears and comfort us with the promise of everlasting life in you. Lord, in your mercy. Accept these prayers, gracious God, and those known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. For our remembrance of the saints, you are invited to turn in your hymnal to hymn number 426, sing with all the saints in glory. We will sing the first verse together, and then you'll hear several names read. We'll sing the second verse, you'll hear more names read, and then we'll sing the third verse. At any time during this, you're invited to come forward and light a candle um, and place it in memory of someone. Um, something else I was going to say, it just left my brain, so hopefully it wasn't that important. Um, so during this time, I remember what I was going to say. If this is an unfamiliar hymn to you, feel free to just listen through the first verse um, to get a feel for the tune and join in on the second and third.
Miriam Paris, Augusta Paris, Pierce Paris, Blanche Nichols. to Jesus and surrounded by the cloud of witnesses, may we live forgiven, running the race God has set before us, both now and to eternity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Share that peace with one another. Blessed are you, maker of all things. As you have entrusted us with all that you have created, now gather our gifts, nourish us with this sacrament, and send us to those who hunger and thirst. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to be our thanks and praise. 
It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the witness of your saints, you show us the hope of our calling and strengthen us to run the race set before us, that we may delight in your mercy and rejoice with them in glory. And so with all the saints, with the choirs of angels and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. into the future. We bless you, O oh God. We give you thanks for your dear Son, at the heart of human life, near to those who suffer, beside the sinner, among the poor, with us now. We thank you, O oh God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his love for us on the way of the table, and to the end, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We pray for the gift of your Spirit in our gathering in this meal among your people throughout the world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God, through Christ Jesus, by your Spirit in your church, without end. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. Let we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ spreads a table before you. Gather here with all the saints. You may be seated. 